What's up, everybody? Farrell's here to teach you five things you need to know about defense in Madden 19. Whether you're a MUP player or a gameplay guy, this will help you out. So we'll start with beginner and move on to some advanced level tips. First things first, Detroit Lions playbook. That's what we're in. It has 3-4. It also has 4-3. It also has 3-3-5 three, three, odd. And then it has 3-3-5 three, three, wide. But we really like the odd. It's only found in two playbooks, Patriots, Lions. But the Lions is the flavor of the week for online players. So if you're playing Mutt, this is the playbook you should be in. It's also got dollar. Now, people are asking me about what plays to call. And this is a huge mistake that new players make. And even just players in general. Call less defensive plays. You should really call no more than four defensive plays. And I'm going to show you some of the plays that I like to call. So I start out the game in 3-3-5 three, three, odd. Um, you could also start it out in normal or you could start it out in wide. But don't start out in 3-4 or 4-3 because you don't know if your opponent's going to run yet. Yeah, early opponents tend to run early and then throw late. But you, you want to start out in 3-3-5 three, three, because if they run and they can't run against 3-3-5, three, three, that's good. The difference obviously being you get an extra corner rather than a linebacker. So I like to call the play Cover 3 Sky Show 4. That's the play I like to come out in. It's a nickel set with a, an edge blitzer. And that pretty much works across the board consistently. Now, while I don't have that formation or I don't want to use that, I would call a play maybe like Buck Slant. It's a little bit aggressive, but it gets the job done. Nickel Blitz 2 has been popular in years past. Something from a 3-3-5 three, three, or some type of set with at least one edge guy rushing. Maybe it's the Sam Will Blitz down there. Um, those are the plays I would recommend calling early in downs because they don't um, give up too much and they're, and they're solid, right? So let's obviously reconnect the controller because that has been the story of our life. Um, you, see, you can see the edge rusher here. You can set up all different kinds of pressure. If you want to blitz, you can. You can simply blitz, you know, here, and you can look to get some different pressures that that will come in with the edge. There we got two guys. Generally, that doesn't happen, but since I'm making a video, they decided to let that happen. Um, so you can do that. Now, if you don't want to do that, you now have this guy as your free player. So you can say he's been scrambling a lot with the quarterback. I want to contain L trigger RB, or I want to um, QB spy this guy. Because he's thrown over the middle or he likes to scramble and then at the snap of the play this guy will will go follow him and then contain rush breaks off and you can actually take care of business um, by sending the spy by clicking down the right stick but so let's let's actually look what happened there at the snap of the ball guys on QB spy he blitz before he heads over to the middle of the field this contain rush because we contained those guys take wide rush angles and the second we try and break off they're containing the edge, and they e they can easily get a block shed. So bad players tend to roll out and drop back too far. A lot of players do um, use a Michael Vick. They drop back. They roll out too far. So that's why this is good. Um, another reason this is good is because you're sending edge pressure. If they're using a Vick, they're going to try and roll left, and they're going to run right into it. Now, how can you make this better, and what are some things you should do on defense consistently in Madden 19? Well, curl flats are good. Um, those zones, those purple zones, they're 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 fine. But what's better, we'll we'll show you here in one second. So, what is one of the problems with curl flats? Well, let's see if we can get it to happen. Um, so we're gonna try and get something to occur here. So zone matching, right? So. It didn't actually happen there, but what will happen to you from time to time is this guy is in a curl flat zone. He won't actually play. So right here, he actually plays the purple, right? And your brain goes, wow, a corner zone, which is not a real thing. But you go, oh, a corner route. That's great because he can drop down, crush 81. If he throws a short pass, he's not going to get a lot of yards. And it looks like he's playing the corner. You probably wouldn't throw that. But what happens sometimes is 39 man's up 17 and now all of a sudden 39 is playing coverage against 17 man coverage not not standing in his little corner zone as you guys like to say but he is actually fought he actually follows him um in the zone so that's called coverage matching so some things i like to do to to prevent that or, or not let that happen i press i press y which is the coverage menu 
I then flick down on the right stick to play underneath coverage. So like third and two, all I do is I call underneath coverage because if I think they're going to throw to the flat, I want this guy to no longer be in a purple zone and drift. I want him to be in a hard flat and, and play underneath where if they throw to X, I'm going to pick it off. Not just tackle him short, but I'm going to pick it off. Now, obviously, the bad thing can be that that does leave the corner out so much more open. So if I think they're going to throw long, and if it's third and 17, I don't want to do hard flat. So what do I do in that situation? What do I do most of the time with this play specifically? Y, right stick down, to get to hard flat, and then Y, right stick up, to get to cloud flat. Cloud flats last year were amazing. They're still good this year. So you want to use these to get more depth in your zones. Guys, we're still on the first play. This is why you call the same play over and over again, because look how many things you can do from it without it really being the same thing. So let's see how a cloud flat might play oh, the wire out. So it played it a little bit better. It used to drop back even deeper last year, but there's a chance you might not um, even fully want to throw that. Like he's standing where he breaks from. He's still, he's there. He's going to tackle that guy short. He's kind of standing in the same zone as the purple zone. So... Why not just call the cloud flat? And then he breaks. He does eventually break down because that is a deeper corner, but that's why cloud flats are good. That's why people recommend them. Well, Farles, why don't you just press Y up on the right stick? Because Y up on the right stick doesn't change your curl flat zones to cloud flats. It keeps them at purple zones. So you have to do Y right stick down, then you have to do Y right stick up to get the cloud flats. That is why we do that. Now, if you don't want your players to match, this is a tip from Mole, Devin Mole. He works at EA. He says press Y, like so, and then simply, and you to come up here, uh, you press Y again, and they move. So this is the pl protect the sticks. There's no sticks in practice mode. Um, but if it's 3rd and 10, they're going to play to the sticks. If it's 3rd and 2, they're going to play to the sticks. If it's 3rd and 13, they're going to play to the sticks. Last year, it was really easy to convert like 3rd and longs, 3rd and 20s, because the zones didn't drop deep, and then everyone could just smart route the zone the out to 20 yards. But this year, you can do that. That will actually cancel all zone matching, uh, is what Mole says. So you don't want them to match. That's what you can do. And then they'll play drop to the spot. So it'll actually drop to the spot of, of the affected area where you want them to, to go. And they won't just like man up Jimmy Graham and run with him in the scene. Um, so that's another thing you want to consider. Do you, if they're running some certain type of formation or certain type of route where like you're, you're calling zone coverage and all of a sudden you see guys get manned up and you're like, what the heck? I don't get this. Zones are busted. No, it, that's, that's the behaviors they're supposed to do. Um, but you can stop them from doing that by using Y and then um, sticks. So it's actually not YY. It's actually Y and then LB. So Y and then LB. I had that wrong about two minutes. Y, LB, sticks. We'll drop. That's the way to get that specific thing. Dean. That's, a, that's a massive pro tip that's going to change the way people play defense. It happened about... Four days ago, people are, are making videos about it, but just one other tip. Now, that's all off of one play, right? We called three through five. So if they run, we, our D feels pretty good. If they um, pass, we feel pretty good. But the other things you can do, you can call uh, three, four. You can call three, four solid, go to a play like Trio Sky Zone if they're really running against you or you want to blitz, or they're calling like under center, like if they're in single back tight, um, or single back, deuce close, like you could call it something like 3-4, call Trio Sky Zone, um, and mix those in. If they're really opening things up and passing and your team is good enough, you can call a dollar. You could either call like cross three fire press right there. Um, you got a lot of options, right? And whether it's a three down line or four down line, you should be in, in business whether you want to be four, three, Four three four four three. The thing they like to call is four three over. Um, you can call the play. I don't like corner blitz. That guy's too wide, right? He's never going to get in there. 
Um, but maybe like a Will Blitz or Fire Zone 2 is a little aggressive, but like third and short Fire Zone 2 is pretty good. Um, y, right stick down. But so far, I've only given you one play, and we're now 10 minutes in. So, Farles, give me the rest of the plays and get out of here. All right, so we like that 3 3 5 odd, that one play. But if you want to have guys drop, then you want to call cover four drop. So um, people say, I get beat by deep crossers, right? So I'm getting beat deep by Randy Moss, Tyreek Hill, and um, post. So you're going to get beat. You're going to be get hit with routes. Like Randall Cobb's route, if people are going to put Randy Moss on Randall Cobb's route, and they're going to try and throw it deep. Now, they need more field to do such a thing. Problem is, like, cover three, he runs past that guy, and he's too fast. But uh, but cover four will, will help you get there. Adjustments I like to make to cover four. It's actually a pretty good run defense uh, because you can see this guy's in a run gap. So you actually have to bring him down to the box so that he actually plays his run gap. Uh, and then if so, if they run right, which you can hold down R trigger and B, you should do this anytime you think a guy's going to run to know where your run fits are. This is just run defense. This isn't the play art. Those guys aren't blitzing. This is your run fits. It's in the game. A lot of people don't know about it. R trigger B. Uh, that's if they run right. If they run left, which they're more likely to run left because Montgomery is going to likely not take the hand up and go back to the right. Counter's not that strong. He's right, likely going to run left. This is what's going to happen. Uh, Church is your backside guy. He's going here, so you want to get him there. This guy's got to get all the way over to that gap. So I like him kind of there. And then this guy's got to play here. So he's got to be about... 26. Now I've audibled and, uh, and moved all that. But now, notice I'm in cover two man. Everything's jacked up. When I do run fits, those two safeties I brought down, they are no longer in run fits because they're in deep zones. So when I go back to cover four, you can see here, those guys, once again, back in run fits, left and right. That's why people bring the safeties down in cover four. So if, if somebody's running against you, cover four looks like it's good pass D, and it is, but it's even better run D because you get those safeties up in the box, and they, they can help uh, shuffle things back inside. So... That's why I like to call cover four. It's kind of the opposite of what you might think. But I really like to call those those hybrid plays first. Right? I really like to call cover three sky show four first. Then if if the blitz isn't working or they're picking it up or they're rolling the other way or they they're throwing in the seams, like they're really quick throwing me in the seams and, and beating me up in there, I go to cover I'll go to cover four drop. Or or if they're running, like if they're running, I'll go to cover four drop. I can't really stop it. Not that, not if I can't like tackle them for a loss or they're gaining like two yards, three yards. I don't care about that. But if they're getting like seven yards and they're in I form, pounding it out, I'm like, all right, I gotta go cover four drop or I gotta go three four. But I can pretty much stay in three three five odd this play all game and just use those adjustments I showed you earlier. Now, what else might I do? Cover two sink. So I'll do cover two sink quite a bit. I would say eight. I play sixty percent of the time. I call that 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 three through five odd play. Twenty percent cover four. Twenty percent cover two. I don't know how much is left. Five ten percent man. Five percent man. Five percent man blitz, which we'll talk about here in a second. So a straight cover two is just rock solid. I don't like to use with the mid read. I like to let the mid read do his thing. Uh, the vertical hook will will. Um, it will match. So like if Allison runs straight, pretty sure. So he dropped there. He did not man up the hook, um, which is good. But if he does and he's getting beat because his zone matches there, then you can use the tip we talked about earlier, which is YLB to protect sticks. So I like to commit to user the backside vert hook not the mid read, but the vert hook. Because what I like to do is if they do run it, um, I feel like I can hide here, and then I feel like I can like get in. Like it's up to me to get in there. I'll let him run for two yards all day. Don't care. Um, the other reason I like to do that, 
is because then I'm more active. Because uh, generally there's going to be some type of drag. Either Graham's going to be on a drag or Allison's going to be on a drag. And I like to kind of be on the weak side, chill. I like to get here, and then I like to get back to the middle. Then I like to drop off there. And just kind of like user flow, be, in, be a pain, be in the area, be on the weak side. I like to be on the weak side. I don't like to be on the strong side because I want to be where they're heading to, not where they're starting at and run away. Um, so that's my thought. Sometimes I like to pretend that I'm not going to do anything with Allison. Because like if this guy is blitzing, right? Um, Aiden's blitzing. The mid read's probably not going to get there. But I know I got to get there, right? I know I got... Because I know he's blitzing. And if they streak Allison... I, I can't go defend the corner with this linebacker. But I can defend streak. So what do I like to do? I like to kind of get in there, snap, I go, boom, I go, and I at least like get there and I at least delay the throw long enough for the safety to get there. So I like to be busy with the weak side. That's my thing. And that's Tampa 2. And then the last two things I'll call, once again, about cover for 20% of the time, Tampa 2 20% of the time. And what's nice is you can just audible from cover 3 show 4, you can just audible to Tampa 2. You don't even have to call it. The last thing I'll do sometimes, um, and this depends on your team build, your composition. This depends on if they're in tight sets or bunch sets or whatever. But I'll go up to dollar and I'll call a straight cover two man LB blitz. Because some people can't beat cover two man and you don't know unless you find out. Now, could there be games if your team has really good man coverage where you just start out in man and you just say, Hey, if they can't run it, because they, they could run against this, but a lot of people don't. But they could run against cover two man, LB Blitz. So do you let them do that? That's up to you. So how do I set this up? Well, what I do is I make sure I contain Rush. And I'm not really going to get sacks here. And then I either spy this guy or I user him personally. Or I drop him into, like, if it, like a corner route's going to beat me, I drop him in a purple. If a flat route's going to beat me, I drop him in um, a hard flat. Or I drop them in QB Spy if they're really running it. Or I user him. But what, who I really like to use her, I like to use the guy in the halfback. Then if the halfback blocks, I'm free over the middle. If he if he goes, then I gotta follow him. But if I have a hard flat and the halfback goes to the right, I don't really care. Because the hard he's car, hard flat's gonna cover him. I can then he's going that way, I'm good. I can now go out, potentially get to the corner, do all that. So if they don't have loads of man beating routes, it, they'll complete a lot of passes, but it makes their drives long. It's tough. Um, these deep zones aren't as great as some of the other deep zones in the game, so that's why I don't love man like I used to. Um, so it, it's a change of pace. It's a shot. It's It can fool somebody because they might finally, this guy keeps calling cover three, and I'm finally going to toast them. But it doesn't really work that way. Um... Lastly, some games people call mid blitz. Um, like the like cover one is different than cover two, than two man under. Cover one hole is different, so much different than two man under. Like it just plays differently. So I don't. A lot of people do run that. I don't. But that you might face that. We can talk about that in a future video. Um, Like, have you ever just played somebody that called mid blitz all game long? I don't recommend it, but every now and then, it's pretty much always one of your quick audibles. Like this is pretty much always one of your quick audibles. Um, that if you flick down on the right stick, in pretty much any formations, Y and then flick down on the right stick, pretty much always a cover one, cover zero blitz. So you can get pretty spicy. Once again, I always recommend covering the guy in the halfback. He stays in, he stays in. If he goes out, he goes out. 5% call. Like, 5% call, but 80% of the time you're going to get a sack or a quick throw. It's not great. I, I don't recommend it, but some people call this, and if people aren't good and they don't get the ball out and they don't know what to do, it's really tough. So I would mix that up in 5%. So hopefully this helps you know what plays to call. 60% of the time... 335 odd or the 335 the, the blitz and corner version 15 percent 
camp to two, 15% cover four if they're tending to run. Bring the safeties down. 5% two man just to switch it up. 5% hit blitz just to switch it up. So if you're getting beat by deep posts, you know, you gotta either user it or back guys up or don't let them get time to throw the deep post. Like that's probably the biggest thing about deep posts. Um, use the Y button to your advantage. Like gotta use Y button, flick down, flick up, um, sticks. Um, user weak side, we talk, I have a video on user coverage um, of actual buttons and mechanics and stuff, but if you wanna know more about specific plays where I use her, you can talk about that. Um, I hope this helps. I hope this was relevant. I hope this format's good. Um, it's not the not the fanciest type of video, but I think it's effective. I think it will help you get better. So that's where I'm going to leave it today. If you have more questions, if you have more topics you want to see videos about, leave them in the comments, and we'll make those. And until next time, guys, stay hungry.